Shalom, family. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, the Masha Yah, the one that carries the burden of Yah, his voice, our high priest, and soon coming king. Hear, O Yeshua, Yahuwah, our mighty one. He is one. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the word of Yah. This is preparation for the kingdom. Part two. Let's read together. The word of Yah is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews 4 and 12. He's talking about the law. We went through the law in part one. Was your heart affected? Did you see some things that you had to correct? Correct them. Don't be a rebel. Correct them. The word shows exactly who you are and it will show it to you. See, a rebel will just turn away from it. They'll get angry. They'll leave the channel. Some, let me say not some, very few will hear it. Turn their lives around and do it. Now, if you think part one cut straight to the heart, watch what part two is going to do. Let's begin. Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 to 36. 34. Do not think do not put it in your mind that I came to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. What is this sword? Is he coming to cut men asunder? No. The sword that he's speaking about that two-edged sword from the beginning the word what is the word the law anytime you hear the word of God the word of Yah it's speaking about the laws statutes judgment and commandment it's not going to bring peace in your home It's going to bring division. 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Is he telling you he's come to cause you to disrespect your father? No. What is he speaking about then, Brother David? Doctrinal principles. The father loves Jesus. The son says, no, father, it's not about Jesus. His name is Yahusha. The father says, Jesus abolished the law. The son says, no, father, the law is still in force. And you have to keep it. And the daughter against her mother. Same principle applies. One keeps the law. One does not keep the law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Same principle applies again. One keeps the law. And the other violates the law. 36. A man's foes 
shall be there of his own household. Is this clear? Men, pay attention. Who are your opposition? It's not going to be those in the streets. All of your opposition is going to be in your house. Do you hear me? They're going to come against you. If you are keeping the commandment, see the man here whose household is against them is keeping the commandments and they are not. Anyone who is in opposition to a righteous man who keeps or wants to implement the commandments in his house, they're your enemy. Could that be you, wife? Look what you're causing if you don't follow your husband to the letter. You're going to cause your children to die. You may die. You can be replaced. So can they. Men, stand up for the laws of Yah. Your opposition will come against you. Stand firm. Keep the commandments. Love Yahuwah with all your heart, mind, and soul. Implement his ways. Now we're in America here. The land of our captivity. Who's ruling the households today? The women. There's no man present. It's her and the children. So let's reverse this, ladies. The woman's foes are going to be they of your own household. You want to implement the commandments and do what is righteous in your house. But your children are against you. What are you going to do? Do you coddle them? Do you enable them? If you do, you have destroyed your children. 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. What are you talking about, Yahusha? Aren't we supposed to love our mother and our father? Yes, of course we are. What is he speaking about here? Doctrinal principles. Mom and dad love Jesus, and they say Jesus abolished the law. We don't have to keep that anymore. Shut up, boy. I don't want to hear that mess. Don't you bring me that mess here talking about some Yahusha. Jesus is the one whom I love. Who do you follow? Mother and father? Or Yahusha? Mother and father is in a strong delusion believing lies. They never study. They never checked anything out. They're just following the traditions of men. But you, on the other hand, have went through the word. And you found that everything that they taught you when you were young was a lie. Do you continue to follow them? Or do you follow the law? And he that loveth son or daughter more than me, he is not worthy of me. This is mostly for the mothers. Yeah. They'll put their children before the Most High. They put their children before their husbands. This is a terrible thing. You've destroyed them if you do so. You've destroyed yourself. All of the work that you're doing to try to make it into the kingdom, it shall be lost because of these wicked children that don't listen, curse you out, talk back, Keep no laws. 
disrespectful and you're going to take them over Yahusha who died for you who is in heaven interceding on your behalf who's going to come and cleanse the path so that you can return back to your own country and your allegiance are with these wicked children over him? You are not worthy of him. Let me give you two examples of those who loved Yah more than their children. Abraham. He received the word. He was told to go and sacrifice the son of the promise. You know, he was a hundred and change when he had Isaac. Man, what a joy. The child came out of Sarah's womb, just like the promise said. Now he is told by an angel fallen or righteous we don't know but that is not the topic of discussion keep that in mind the topic of the discussion is that Abraham was obedient he took Isaac the child of his old age took him to the mount and was bringing the knife down upon Isaac to kill him. And the angel stopped him and said, the father has a ram in the bush. He was obedient even to sacrificing his son. What are you doing? Your children are transgressing the laws of the most high speaking to you like you are a piece of dirt and instead you're coddling them? Look at Rebecca, my favorite woman in the whole Bible. I think after her is Tamar. But Rebecca, wow. <sighs> she received a prophecy when she had the children in her womb. Two nations are in your womb, and the elder will serve the younger. She didn't understand what was going on, but as they got older, Esau, wicked beyond all imagination, hunting and killing and drinking, violating the law. He couldn't care less about the law. He didn't even want to learn it marrying strange women so when it came time for the promise or the birthright to be given to the firstborn son Rebecca heard it while Esau went out into the field to kill the venison Rebecca oh man she made some curry goat she made some skins some hairy skins to put on Jacob's arms she took the coats and the clothes of Esau from his tent and put him on Jacob so that he can smell like Esau. She gave him voice training so he can kind of speak like Esau. What was she doing? Did she transgress the law? No, she did not. She was carrying out the prophecy that Yahuwah had given to her. She had demoted the wicked one and elevated the one who stood for righteousness. Now, I just gave you two examples. If you don't meet or exceed those two examples in your household when it comes to your children, you are not worthy of him. 38. And he that taketh not his cross. Stop again. This word cross should not appear in your book. Cross comes from the Latin word crux. They say 
that this New Testament was taken from the Greek text. So they borrowed crux from the Latin text and put it in the Greek text. What is the word in the Greek text? Storos, azulon. What does it mean? Upright, stake, pale, or tree. So what was he saying? And he that taketh not his staff and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What is he talking about? Are you here just to learn all of this and keep it to yourself? You have to go and bring this knowledge to your brothers, your sisters, your siblings. Because you're going to have to go through what everyone else is going through. You have to be rejected. 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. What do you mean find your life? Well, our people here think that America is the promised land. Let me say that again. The children of Yashar think America is their promised land. It is not. It is the white man's promised land. You are not privy to his promises. Where does his promises come from? The devil. Did you hear me? So you want to be a part of Satan's kingdom. Yes, that's what you want. All you have to do is look around you. Look at the wickedness that is in this land. This is Satan's kingdom. And you think that because you've got an education here and you've got a good job here, that you found your lifestyle and you're being blessed. No. If you want to make your habitation here, you're going to lose your life. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. What does that mean? You got to give up this whole life that you have here in America. You have to give up the world. Brother David, I can't work anymore. No, of course you have to work. How are you going to eat? Come on. Be serious now. Don't make stupid statements. You have to give up the lifestyle that America has afforded you. Oh, you want to go to the movies, you want to party, you want to drink, you want to smoke, you want to go to bars, you want to do all these things. The only thing that you're not doing is keeping the Father's commandments. You even think that if you go to church on Sunday that you're going to be saved. No, you're going to lose your life. But if you follow Yahusha and keep the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments, you will find your life. Luke chapter 12 verses 51 to 53 we have a witness here 51 do you think that I came to bring peace on earth well let me tell you straight up no what I came here to do was to bring division he came to bring division what do you mean division in your house. What are we talking about? Doctrinal principles. Some will keep the law. And the others shall be against the law. Watch. 52. From henceforth there shall be five in one household. Three against two. And two against three. Hmm. One of these parties wants to keep the law. The other party does not. 53. The father shall be divided against the son. We hope that the father wants to keep the law. But most likely it's not true. And the son against the father. Hey. Hey. The son has stood up and he says, Pop, we have to keep the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments. But the father says, No. The mother against the daughter. One of them is keeping it or wants to keep it, and the other is against it. The daughter against the mother. 
One of them wants to keep it, but the other is against it. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. One of them wants to keep it, but the other is against it. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. One of them wants to keep it, but the other is against it. Isn't this happening in your house today? Now you have to correct it. 54. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. 55. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it cometh to pass. 56, you hypocrites, you, the ones who say you keep the law and don't, you can discern the face of the sky and the earth, you know, when the rains and the heat is coming, but how is it that you do not discern this time? What is he telling you? You're in the end time right now. It is almost done. It's either you put up or shut up. Most of your household will not make it into the kingdom. You have to concentrate on you before you can help them. Men, you are responsible to lead your house. Ultimately, if you have a man in the house and your children are not in check, the man is at fault. Do you understand me? Because you did not rule your house well. Ezra chapter 10, verses 2 to 3. Men, let me show you real, righteous, powerful men who make the hard decisions this is who he wants in the kingdom. The ones who make the hard decisions, they will carry out judgment. Verse two, and Shekaniah and the son of Jahiel, one of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra, we have trespassed against our mighty one. They realize they transgressed the law. They just came out of Babylon, out of Babylon. They were in captivity, 70 years. They were just released to come back into the land and rebuild the temple. Before you can come back into the land and rebuild the temple, the first thing that has to be done is that the law must be read. When the law was read, it came to the part where you are not to take any strange wives of the land. So what did they do to trespass against their mighty one and have taken strange wives of the people of the land? Yet now there is hope in your sorrow concerning this thing. How can it be hope? You took strange wives of the land. What is it that you can do to correct this issue? Verse three. Now, therefore. Let us make a covenant with our mighty one to put away all the wives and such as are born of them. What? They came from captivity just like we're getting ready to do. They had married strange women. In this land here, the strange women the white women, the Spanish women, white women, and these Indian women, you cannot marry them. Who are you supposed to marry? The daughters of Zion. If they don't look like you, if they're not nappy like you, you are not to marry them. Do you understand? So they made a covenant with the Most High to put away all of the wives. And look, and the children that are born of them. 
Aren't these children seed? The answer is yes. Why would they put away seed? Because once they went into these strange women, their seed was spoiled. And they knew that they had transgressed the law, so they decided to put them away. They probably loved these women. The children loved them. They were good to them. Now, you have to expel them. They probably gave them gold and silver and everything they could for their journey away from the promised land. The wives probably turned on them and cursed them out and said, I hate you and I hate your mighty one. What type of a mighty one would do such a thing to split up a family? He told you not to marry these dogs in the first place. But you went and did it anyway. According to the counsel of my Lord. They put him away according to the counsel of Ezra. That's who my Lord is. And of those that tremble at the commandment of the Most High. Tremble. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. If the commandments do not make you tremble, you are not qualified for the kingdom. If the commandments make you tremble, you would do exactly what these brothers did. They corrected their behavior and they put these wives out and they put these children out. And here, wickedness flourishing in your house and you're coddling it and let it be done according to the law so you have to go to the law to find out what to do here's the problem you don't know the law nor are you trying to learn it when the father goes down the whole household goes down the nation goes down. The mother, she can do nothing. She does not have a seed in her loins. When she dies, she dies. When a man dies, generation after generation after generation that is in his loins dies with him. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 15 and 17 verse 13. Listen to this. He that justifieth the wicked. What does that mean? He who enables wickedness in his house. How do you enable it? You continue to let it happen. You let it flourish. There's no chastisement. There's no judgment in your house. So you enabled it. And he that condemneth the just. Let's say the father is a just man. And the wife is coddling the children. And condemning the husband for righteousness. The husband says, if you're not going to keep these commandments and follow my instructions, get out. The wife says, no, you stay right here, baby. Don't you worry about a thing. Even they both are an abomination to Yahuwah. So if you coddle these wicked children and then you condemn the one who is trying to keep them in line, you're an abomination. You will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. Your children will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because you have destroyed them. 13. Whosoever rewarded evil for good. What a twisted minded person. You're going to bless the evil doer in your house. Evil shall not depart from your house. Because evil has become comfortable. Who allowed it to become comfortable? You did. Wickedness, evil, unrighteousness, 
those who transgress the law must be expelled from your house. Men, if you're allowing it to flourish, you're coddling wickedness. Now let's see who the primary enabler is. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, the children of Yeshua, children are the oppressors. Who's ruling in your house? Who's oppressing you? Who's got you stressed out? Hmm? But look at their enabler. And women rule over them. Brother David, how did this happen? All of the mighty men of Jeshurun were destroyed. What was left? The women and the children. Isn't that the same way as it is here today? Yeah. If you don't have a mighty man in your house, one who makes the tough decisions, one who will bring judgment in his household, you're going to be destroyed. But there's no mighty man. Didn't I just say that a few minutes ago? They're all marshmallows today. This society has turned men into marshmallows and transferred the power to the woman. Now take back your power. How are you going to do that? You're going to beat them up? No. Study. Apply the laws, statutes, judgments, commandments. It begins with you. Let your light shine so that everyone in your household will see your change. And they'll follow your example. And you have to be powerful because these children will run over you they will lead you know if you tell them to do something and they do the opposite who's leading you or them they are they should be so in fear of the father when mommy says to them wait till your father gets home <laughs> They're supposed to be trembling. But there's no father there. And even if the father's there, still, there's no father there. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. Who's leading? The children. Who's enabling them? Their mothers. He to justify if the wicked and condemn the just are both an abomination unto Yahuwah and destroy the way of thy paths. Destruction. That is the outcome. Who did it? You, mommy, who did it? You, daddy, if you're in the house. Can't blame the children. They need leaders, not coddlers, not servants. You think that you're supposed to be here to serve them. Do you think that I didn't go through this in my walk? with Yahuwah, all of us have to go through this. 
There was five of us in the house. You remember the example that came before? <laughs> Two against three. <laughs> this book is amazing. It was like they had a television and they're watching what was happening in our household. Do you think that they're watching what's happening in your house to see your performance? The answer is yes. I had to expel one of my sons. The other one left on his own, got his own place. Then I only had my daughter left. The boys have never, ever disrespected me with their mouth. I guess they were too scared. But my daughter was not afraid. She came against me and let me have it. She told me that I had brainwashed her mother, you know, to keep the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments. That's what she said. What do you think I did? I kicked her little butt out of the house. Did her mother oppose me? No, she didn't. She went to live with her aunts, two of them. She told them the story. Once they heard the story, they said to her, what's wrong with you? This man is not even your biological father, but he took you in. He raised you. He was out there every morning early at the bus stop waiting with you to protect you, keep you safe. He provided food, shelter, clothing. When you got old enough you wanted to drive, he taught you how to drive. Then he went with you and got your license. He bought you a Mercedes Benz so that you can go to high school. And this is how you appreciate him? See, children don't appreciate anything that you do today. If they even thought that way, they would not come out with any type of statement against you. But I handed out judgment and she's still not back in my house today. She has her own place. She went into the military after that. But she apologized. She repented. She came back. She said she was sorry. Have you guys been reading the Bible? Did you understand that you have to turn them over to Satan? They have to go through some things so they, they can see how well they had it and how much you were doing for them. They call me on a constant basis just to say thank you because they are so far ahead of all of the other children. They were taught well. And this is what you have to do. If you say you love these children, then you have to teach them the law. Let me tell you about the hypocrisy that is happening amongst our people in our houses. When it comes to the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments, guess what they say? Oh, well, they have a choice. They have a choice. They have to choose whether they want to keep the commandments or not. They have to choose Yahuwah for themselves. I cannot force that on them. Did you force them to go to school? To get the white man's education? Oh, yes, you did. But yet you won't force them. To keep the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments that would bring them life. The white man's education is only going to bring them a career for a short period of time. Remember, he that thinks he found his life is going to lose it, but he that loses his life for the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments, he will find it. Find life today. Implement in your household the ways of Yahuwah. We're not talking about you going around cursing them out 
acting like a savage or beating on your wife or any of those things. It comes through knowledge. Obtain knowledge and you can control your house. Continue to part three. Shalom.